Next up, we have Jose in Montecito, California. Hey, Jose, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. How are you? We're doing great. How can we help? So um kind of got myself into a little bit of a predicament here. I, I, w- I, have, I have a truck, so it's an older vehicle uh, that I've been using uh, to commute back and forth from work. Well, however, I was getting tired of paying so much in gas because, um, you know, in California, the, gas is pretty expensive over here. Um, so I went and purchased a smaller vehicle, more economic, uh, which was great. But I didn't really pay attention too much to the uh, interest rate afterwards. Mm. Ouch. Uh, the vehicle, the vehicle cost it, out the door was nineteen thousand. Okay. Um, but afterwards, uh, when I looked at the paperwork, uh, I have a twenty eight percent interest. Whoa, so, Migo, mm-hmm. what are you? Oh no, Jose! Oh my yeah, gosh! Yeah, they took you to the cleaners. How much did you owe on that truck? Uh, no, the truck was paid off. That was that was my truck. I got that truck for like four thousand dollars. So you gave somebody nineteen thousand dollars at twenty eight percent to save fifty bucks a month on what gas. I, what I thought was going to be a little bit better. But, yeah. um, Shoot. Okay. What yeah, could you sell? Well, hey, then, Jose, what could you sell the car for today? Have you Kelly Blue booked it? Yeah, and I even went back to the same place that I got it from. Only for them to tell me that their trade in value will only be seventeen thousand. <laughs> Dude, yeah, what that's did you, a what depreciating did you, asset. Right what did you do with the with the truck? Do you still have it? I still have the truck. The truck okay. is worth uh, like about six thousand. Okay, so Jose, what you're gonna do is I would get out of this loan asap. Okay, so what you're gonna have to do is take a smaller loan, a two thousand dollar loan for the difference to get out of the car because you're upside mm-hmm. down on it. And I would rather you owe two thousand dollars with a loan from the bank. Not at twenty eight percent. Go to a credit union. Man. Then, then have a car that's continuing to depreciate the more you drive it, and it's this. Yeah. I mean, it's it, astronomical interest rate. So stupid. So I would get out of that today, Jose. I really would. And you'll get a loan for two thousand dollars, and I would drive your paid off truck and not have payments, and start <laughs> tackling this this two grand. I'd rather you owe two grand than twenty eight grand. And we say this or with, nineteen uh, grand. We say sorry. this with love. But we're kind of clowning a little bit. But basically, you're going to end up with about a two thousand dollars stupid tax. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. And, and then you're going to be like, next time somebody's like, "Hey, I got this good idea," you're going to go, <laughs> "Go, no way, man! I remember mm-hmm. that." By the way, Not if the no trade-in more. value was seventeen thousand at this scam artist that sold you this car, that's a great point. I bet you could sell it for twenty thousand dollars private sale and that's net a, a net a grand on it. Yes, that's a great point, Jose. Yeah, don't go back to them. Right. See if you can private sell it. I would put this on Facebook Marketplace tonight and see Craigslist. what you and put it for twenty one thousand and see what you get for it. Yep. Okay. Is it a brand new car? Is it brand new? It it's a twenty twenty two uh, Chevy Spark. Okay. Yep. I would that's actually. A great I put it at twenty two, and someone's going to give you twenty, thinking they get they're getting a deal, and they'll just say, "How about just 20? And then you go, "Ah, uh, okay." And then you're going to make a thousand bucks, and <laughs> you're going to have. $1,000 for all your indigestion and probably a little bit of preparation H. And then you're all done and you're never going to do this again, right? That's right. Yeah. No, no. Lesson, lesson learned. Okay, but and yeah. it wasn't until... Is that going? No, I was going to say that last piece of advice that John said is so true that I'm like, this could make or break that two grand loan or not actually coming out ahead. So remember, there's all you're always going to get a better deal most of the time through a private sale. When you go to a dealership, not as good. And especially if you're going back to the people that sold it to you and you're like, please take it back. They're like, we will for 17. Cause they know in their head. Punks, they man. Can, yeah. Punks. Yeah. Hey, uh, have you been through financial peace, brother? I actually just signed up to it. Um, I start on the sixth. Um, awesome. Good. So, Most excellent. All right. Here's what yeah. I'm going to do. I'm going to send you a free copy of total money makeover. And I want you to have that as just as your gift from us. And I want you to read that book as you're entering into this class. It's going to be a great primer as you launch into this class. Good for you, man. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you for your time. Absolutely, oh, you got Jose. it, man. I like you, Jose. You're, Thanks so much. Me and you much. would be friends. I'm confident oh. of it. And you know what, John? I think so much of all of this idea of winning with money, looking at your life, making different decisions, there's a level of humility that you have to be like, Oh, that was a stupid decision. Uh, go with the whoopsie do. Like, on that I feel one. like yeah. we've had some callers call in and we'll get off the call and we're like, we'll say to each other, yeah, they're probably not going to take our advice because you can just feel it from them. That they're like, no, I got my thing. I'm going to do my thing. 
and they keep running down that same track that we're like warning, 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 don't do it, don't do it. So there takes a level of continuing to learn mm -hmm. and to believe that like, okay, not everything I thought was correct is correct. Like I need to learn something new and maybe the decisions I've made with my money are stupid and not good. So I need to make different decisions, right? Like there's a basic human element there that's really key to change your behavior. So there's two things, and I, I, I'll keep them private here between me and my counselor, but there's two things that have a struggle with for decades, yeah. for years. Yeah. And yesterday in my counseling session, it, my counselor's the greatest, my therapist's the greatest, she's incredible. But she said, how long? And I said, what do you mean? She said, how long are you gonna keep working this plan that has never worked? Mm. At what point, and she used the word that I hate with all my guts, <laughs> at what point are you going to submit to another way of, of looking at this problem? Yeah. And that was the most honest, true thing I could have been told. Mm. The way I'm doing this isn't working. So we talked to a caller earlier that um, him and his buddy, they created a company and they built a house, and now they're having to float the note out of their private bank accounts, interest only, because they had a scheme and thing, and those dudes can't breathe. And it's, it's a, like... Okay, you tried it. You got crypto. You got it's not working. Will you be interested in trying something else? Yep. Just a totally different way of doing life. And that's Jose's. That that's why I pointed all that out because I'm like he came with such like humility. This humility of like oh man up. I screwed now up. So you guys sometimes it's just that of, of admitting I messed up. It's my fault. As Taylor Swift would say, it's, <laughs> hi, it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs>